good afternoon everyone uh, thank you for being here and um, as a pre warning thank you for bearing with us for the next 45 minutes okay so we have we have a very very interesting uh, uh, let's say a caucus of people here different industries uh, different uh, types of customers obviously at some point i guess their customers would be common um, different pressures, uh, different, obviously, perspectives towards building customer relationships, towards uh, the term that we've used, uh, authentic connections, and therefore, obviously, different kinds of solutions uh, towards creating lasting relationships with customers. Uh, before we start off, uh, I would just request each one of uh, each one of us to just take a minute and just introducing a little bit about ourselves. Uh, what do we do? Uh, what have we done? What has been a bit of our professional journey? So, starting with you, Kush. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kush Agarwal, and I'm the head of marketing for Bikano. Uh, the parent company is Bikanewala Foods Private Limited. And uh, we do business in FMCG industry, uh, and we do business in around 15 categories, uh, starting from namkeen and sweets that everyone knows. But what people don't know about is that we also do frozen food, we do retort, we do drinks, we do beverages, so like n number of products. So yeah, uh, uh, being part of the family, I've been in the business for five years now, and that is official, unofficially, it's my whole life because you know, when you're born, everyone is like, the whole conversation in the house is all about business, 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 nothing else. That's the only thing that my family can talk to each other about. So, yeah. Thanks, Nikhil. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm Nikhil Gupta. Uh, I lead marketing and strategy for Signify. Uh, most of our uh, customers know us as Philips Lighting. Uh, that used to be our uh, name. Now the company is known as Signify. Uh, we're the world leaders in lighting uh, and also in India. Uh, we're also the most sustainable lighting company in the world, uh, and I think that's uh, something that we're very, very proud of. Uh, personally, uh, I have about uh, 24 years of work experience. Last 14 years I've been with uh, Philips and Signify. Yeah. Thanks, Nikhil. Rajiv. Hi, uh, my name is Rajiv Dhal. I take care of revenue for a company called Lemma Technologies. Lemma, uh, very quickly for you, is uh, omni channel supply side platform. We offer uh, ad inventory from all emerging formats that include digital out of home, connected TV, retail media, audio, and very soon many other new formats. Uh, we operate uh, in multiple geographies, including US to Australia, ranging from US to Australia. Uh, that's what we are. And we work with all leading brands and agencies to build transparency in the most non-transparent media, which is out of home. And uh, so that's what we've been doing for last uh, seven years. And uh, we would love to uh, you know, hear from your side if you have any uh, specific questions during the course of this discussion. So that's what we do. Thanks, Rajiv. Sachin, over to you. Uh, hi, this is Sachin. I uh, lead marketing for PaisaBazaar.com. Uh, we are a lending aggregator and it's been uh, more than a decade for us uh, since we have been simplifying uh, loans and personal finance for our consumers. I've been with the company since uh, the, almost the beginning. So it's been 10 years for me too. Uh, before that, I uh, ran my own agency uh, for around three years. I have worked in sales marketing for most part of my career. Thanks, Sachin. Vidushi. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Vidushi Goel. I am currently the CMO at Swiss Beauty. Uh, Swiss Beauty is, uh, is a makeup color cosmetics brand. Uh, it's an 11 year old brand which is uh, currently operating in this very fast industry which is beauty and personal care. Uh, uh, earlier to this I was uh, uh, leading the marketing for Mama Earth. Uh, at Hunasa and uh, before that I was with Shop Cruise. So as I would like to call myself, I am a new age marketer who basically balances uh, 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 the 
data with the creativity, and uh, that's about me. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I'm Avik, Avik Chattopadhyay. I run a brand strategy consulting firm called Experial with my co-partner Nirmal Dayani. I've uh, been doing it close to 10 years now. We haven't killed each other, so obviously we're doing pretty good. Uh, before that, I spent 22 odd years in the automotive and the oil and gas industry. Um, so, yeah, there's a little bit of a, a motor head or a petrol head in me. Uh, but here I am, a middle-aged person uh, in quite an old hotel listening to new age solutions. Okay, <laughs> right. Uh, so, uh, I'll, I'll start off with certain questions, which are general questions addressed to each, all of you, okay. But you share, share with us your views from your perspective. So, for you, Kosh, uh, being in the industry where you are, how do you really measure this, this word called trust? Uh, I would say for a brand like Bicano, it's very easy to measure the word called trust because uh, again, we are a food company and food is you know, very well related to health. So if a person doesn't trust the company, obviously they will not consume the product, right? And uh, so when we talk about trust, trust in our language is consistency, that the consumer knows that the product is consistent, it is safe. When we talk about healthy, uh, healthy is a very big term. Healthy doesn't mean like sugarless or uh, this free, that free. Healthy is something, you know, which you eat and it will not harm your body. That is, that is the true definition of healthy product. The new healthy is all about high in protein and everything. So in Bicano, when we talk about healthy product, we make sure that whatever products our consumer they're eating, they should not, you know, feel dissatisfied or it should cause any problem to them. And to make sure we have to set up a lot of quality parameters. Uh, we have to, uh, you know, just the whole process of uh, may, you know, produce something like kaju barfi or sweets or bujia, packaging it safely, giving a shelf life of three months, six months, and making sure it reaches to the consumer where the weather, weather conditions or other conditions in India are such, like there's dust all around, uh, there's a lot of heat, there's a lot of rain, protecting the product like a baby, and then making it sure like it is someone is opening a pack even after four months, five months since the manufacturing date, they are eating it and they are satisfied and they are again coming back, you know, to consume the product. So I guess that's the whole journey from the process of procuring the raw material to packing it, selling it to the consumer until the time the consumer doesn't come back for the product. You just have to monitor everything, keep everything in check and that's the only way that you can build trust. Interesting, very interesting. I'll come to you, Vidushi. Uh, from your journey in Mama to your journey now in Swiss Beauty, has the definition or the manifestation of trust changed? Or is it the same? Um, honestly, uh, it's almost the same. Because at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to BPC, so like Kosh mentioned, uh, in foods, it's very essential for the consumer to trust before uh, trying a brand, while in uh, beauty and personal care uh, in the world we are living in, uh, with the kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, way we are today, uh, we want to look a certain way and we want the products to work a certain way when it comes to beauty and personal care. So which means we are very open to experimentation today. We don't stick with only one particular brand anymore. Uh, and hence the consumer, uh, plus the choices which are there available from a brand perspective, from different formats, textures, is uh, immense. Which means the consumer tries and only comes to the brand and once there is a trust uh, basis the usage. So product essentially speaks for itself. So even when I was with Mama Earth, that was the same way we used to measure whether how much is the consumer coming back to us? What is the consumer saying about our products? And even at currently Swiss Beauty, I think one thing that stands out for the brand unanimously is, uh, is the great value which the consumers are uh, you know, getting with the products because the experience uh, in itself builds the trust for the consumers here. Interesting. So we heard that in both cases, uh, aspects of uh, loyalty, retention, 
are very interesting and very important parameters or let's say barometers or measures of trust. Rajiv, in your business, okay, which is, you know, you're, you're always in the background, okay, for you, what is really the definition of trust? So, we uh, are a B2B business, uh, which means for us, the key components are between brands on one side and uh, media owners on the other side and connecting the two is the consumer. So, we need to be careful about managing expectations from all three parties. That's what we do. So for us, trust is driven by multiple factors that drive uh, process efficiency, that drives transparency in every process that we do, and it should lead to accountability uh, between in the ecosystem that connects these three. So between consumer, media owner, and brand, we should be transparent, efficient, and accountable. So that's what builds trust for us. To give an example, what are the factors that we focus on? Uh, most important from a brand perspective or a buyer's perspective for us is, is my communication appearing in a brand safe environment? Now, so brand safety, ensuring there's no ad fraud, that's on one part. <coughs> that's how we build trust with the brands that give us millions of dollars. Uh, to reach out to the consumers of choice. Now, so that's one critical factor. Second is ensuring that we've got data practices that are privacy compliant because we have responsibility towards consumer as well. Now, be it connected TV communication or be it digital out of home or be it retail media, we need to be careful about first brand safety from a brand's perspective, the right context, from a consumer perspective, is my data in safe hands or are you misusing it? Kind of a area that we take care of. Then comes transparency to the brand or to the buyer with regards to, uh, are you allowing me to audit? Are you allowing me to check the processes, measurability on outcome, everything that matters from a bank for the buck in a market like today. These are three critical factors from three different aspects. And uh, so this is what connects and builds trust for us. Interesting. Because, yeah. uh, Nikhil, I'll come to you because you again run, run an organization which has a strong B2B uh, pillar as well as a B2C pillar. Okay, so for you, um, when, when you're basically you know, straddling between the, the individual customer and the institution, how, how, what, what does really trust mean to you, given the fact that Philips is such a massive legacy brand? And I think that's where <clears throat> the answer is also, that we've been a market leader in this space for over 100 years. And that's the bedrock of trust for us. Uh, we've made it very clinical, uh, really. For us, trust is quality, and uh, like Kush mentioned, it's consistency. Uh, I need to be a brand where when a person installs our light in a stadium, he trusts that on the day of the match, uh, this is something that he's not going to be worried about. Uh, and to that extent, we make sure that uh, quality is virtually a religion in the company. Everything is tested to the T. And sometimes, you know, we feel um, as a multinational that, you know, we're, we're sort of lagging behind in terms of speed. But then when we look at uh, what our competitors are facing when they're quicker to market, but their products at the last moment just don't really stand up uh, to what they were uh, uh, wanting to deliver with. Uh, we really feel proud of that legacy uh, that we're continuing. And uh, I think that is what we need, we deliver even for all our consumer products. Because I think that understanding that we have in B2B about being really non-compromising on quality uh, is something that we want reflected in every product that we deliver, uh, whether it's consumer or professional alike. And we have a huge, like I said, it's clinical science to make sure that under no circumstance uh, is the brand ever at risk when it comes to trust from the consumers. And I think consumers have given us that trust over so many years and hope to God, we will continue that legacy for many, many decades. 
uh, yeah. centuries to come. You're, you're right, you know, because it's, it's this relentless discomfort with anything which is less than perfect that, that possibly is the bedrock of a lot of successful brands, legacy brands. I mean, I can take the typical example of a Toyota. Okay, I mean, for them, everything is centered around quality, right? It, it's not really about the latest design, it's not really about the latest bells and whistles, but it's actually about quality is the bedrock. How reliable can I make my product day in and day out? And Avik, just a quick one on that. And that's what brings consumers and customers back to you Absolutely. at the end of the day. Absolutely. So it's the same with Bikano. Okay, that bhujia has to taste the same. Okay, whether I'm in Ladakh or whether I'm in Kovalam uh, or whether I'm in Bahrain. Okay, when I open that pack, it's got to smell the same. The freshness has got to be the same level of crispness. So, so that's again, you know, the, the consistency. Coming to you, Sachin, you belong to a space where, you know, interestingly, you need to trust the customer more than the customer needs to trust you. So how does that work? So that's half the truth, actually. Uh, so we are a predominantly a B2C company, but uh, in the background, we have banks and NBFCs who are our partners. So in a way, they are also our consumers. We are in the middle. We serve them as well as we serve our consumers. So while uh, uh, when it comes to a loan seeker, we need to trust them more than they need to trust us because we are giving them money. But uh, on the other side, uh, all these banks and NBFCs, they need to trust us more. Uh, only then they'll partner us, uh, right? And, uh, you know, irrespective of an industry or a sector, uh, I believe, uh, you know, when uh, you make, as a brand, when you make a promise and if there is, a, there is coherence uh, in the promise and the delivery, the trust would be there automatically. If these two things are not in sync, trust would not be there, right? And the, the biggest measure of trust is, like everyone reiterated, it's uh, the you know, repeat business and the word of mouth, only two things. I, uh, I don't know if there is anything else which can measure trust as good as these two parameters, right? Uh, so uh, now when it comes to the B2C part of it, uh, uh, just to set you the pers give you the perspective, more than 50% of our business comes from our own consumers, people who come back to Pesa Bazaar, because they know our promise was that we'll simplify uh, uh, the process of getting a loan for you, we'll get you the fastest loan, we'll get you the best loan. Now, uh, the best may not be the cheapest, because loan is a product where you apply and you may and may not get it, because the rejection rate is high, right? So my job is to find the best option for you, this is your profile and we have been doing it for last 10 years and that's why people come back, right? On the other side, when it comes to the banks and NBFCs, we work with more than 80 uh, uh, financial institutions in the country, including large banks like SBI and HDFC to the new age fintechs, people who have started just around a year or two years back, right? So it's a, there are promises that we will give you, uh, you know, the right consumer to you, to land, right? Where we'll try to minimize your risk. We are not, we do not take any risk uh, because these are not our books. But uh, the promise, the, the promise as a brand which we had made is that, uh, you know, whatever happens, we are in it with you. If times are tough, it would be tough for you as well as for us. It's not, we are not uh, merely a marketing partner that, okay, we'll give you the consumer, give us our money. Uh, we don't care what happens later, right? We are there for the entire journey. If a loan is for a five-year term, we will be there. We'll be assessing uh, the performance of our own portfolio and making the uh, you know uh, necessary amendments. And that's why all these partners, all these institutions, they are uh, they have been with us since uh, since the beginning. It's been uh, uh, more than a decade now, and they're happy partners. You know, I've, I I was talking to a, a leading architect a few years ago, um, going by exactly what you said now, Sachin, and he said that in the history of mankind. Uh, a single piece of architecture which the human being has trusted the most is the bridge. Okay? Because if you cannot trust the bridge, you can go nowhere. Yeah. Right? And because the bridge allows people to move, it allows people to connect, it allows people to do things and reach out to others which otherwise they would not be able to. Um, you know, I, I, I worked in Volkswagen for some time. It was my last employed job. And, you know, we in the automobile companies love to do surveys. The moment we sell a vehicle, the first thing we do is we go to the customer and we say, that, sir, please fill up this survey. 
and please uh, you know give us five smileys uh, otherwise my incentive would be held up right uh, it's, it's such a sad thing to do uh, so I tried changing the system it didn't change but I said instead of asking the customer those seven or eight questions ask the customer just one question would you recommend Volkswagen to the person who trusts you the most now it's an extremely deep question so if my parents want to buy a car, would I recommend a Volkswagen to them? If my fiancé wants to buy a car, would I recommend a Volkswagen to them? And if I cannot, it means I, am, I as a brand, I'm in serious trouble. So you need to ask yourself just that one question. Would you recommend this brand to the person who trusts only you and nothing else on this earth? And if you can sincerely say yes, you can be true to your heart, then you're on the right path. Who's coming to you, given the nature of your business, how do you use technology okay, to stay ahead of competition? For example, you know, when I go to a shelf, I see a Bikano, I see a Haldiram, I really do not know how to differentiate between the two. If I see a Bikaram Chandmal, okay, I really don't know how to differentiate. What really distinguishes one from the other? So for you, when you're building your brand, how are you using tech to really bring out that difference? See, that's a very difficult question to answer because, you know, for past couple of years, all the brands in this category are trying to do that. And uh, a few competitors, they have been successfully able to do that. So from my understanding, uh, see, always the answer is very simple. It's just people who are highly qualified, they tend to make it very complicated. So uh, the thing is, uh, when we are, you know, talking to the consumer, uh, uh, I'll just give you a very simple example, like talking about the design, the packaging. It's a, the most expensive thing that an FMCG company goes through. What we do is, when we're sitting in the office, when we're looking at the designs, the packaging, we make it very complicating. We will look at every nick and corner, yeah, not be galat to ho gaya, pe ye to ho gaya. But the answer is very simple. When a consumer is, you know, looking at your packaging, they only look at it for like a few seconds. They don't spend more time than that. So you have to make sure that you have a simple element that is there throughout, whether you are there digitally, whether you are there offline, it's any kind of creative, you know, wherever you are communicating your brand that they can subconsciously, consciously, anywhere in the mind that they understand, yeah, this is Bikanu. So that's what we're trying to do. And we are trying to do it uh, omni-channel way. So it's not just through, you know, our ads, our social media, but it's everywhere. Wherever the brand Bikanu is talking in any form, we are making sure that there is this one common connection, there is this one simplicity, very simple thing, that people are able to connect to. So I guess that's the key. And, uh, and when talking about uh, differentiating uh, online or uh, through e-commerce or any shelf space, currently the issue is uh, when you go to a supermarket, correct, uh, you are walking through the aisles. You get to explore them because you can't just stand somewhere and you buy stuff. In a supermarket, you go through the whole aisle, you visit the whole store, you end up filling the whole cart and then only coming out, you know, buying 4,000, 5,000 rupees worth of groceries once in a month. But uh, with the new e-commerce players like Blinkit or Flipkart, you know, where people are ordering every little thing every now and then. I myself use Blinkit like maybe more than 10 times in a week. I'm ordering this or that throughout or Zomato or something like that. It has made it so convenient for the consumers to purchase the product. So over there, uh, obviously the space is a very big challenge uh, because uh, the entry barriers are very less compared to you know your no normal GT outlay like a Kirana store because uh, their supply chain is much better. They have more money to buy products, and you know it's just it's a powerhouse. So over there, uh, as uh, some as uh, the panelists before us, as they were mentioning, like you have to be on their uh, marketing plan. You have to spend a lot on the media. You have to. There's right now it's our prime season going on, and I'm sitting here. But uh, the back end team, they are working a lot. You know, just taking up the space on Blinkit, taking up the space on Amazon, taking up the space on Flipkart, doing all the performance marketing. 
then there are different social media campaigns going on which are you know retargeting them which are taking them to either my own d2c or some other e-commerce platform it's a very difficult task uh, because the span uh, attention span of the consumer has also decreased and the space you just don't get more than four sqs on your phone at once so i would say it takes a lot more time it takes a lot of more energy but with all the technology coming in to help us out it's more fun to you know go through that thing every day coming to you vidushi uh, again given the the sheer sensitivity as well as the sensuousness of of your product category okay um, and you and you people have a brand ambassador right so where where do you see the role of tech in trying to balance you know the r&d that goes into your product vis-a-vis -vis the the beautiful world that your brand ambassador tries to conjure up for you got it so um so how uh, let me first uh, you know define how would i like to interpret what when we say tech so when we say tech to us the tech is also the data that we gather from various platforms whether it be digital whether it be offline and how do we leverage that data to basically put it into and put that knowledge into whether it's product development or to reach out to our consumers better uh those all aspects uh, uh combined uh, give us the tech that you know uh, and helps us reach the consumer in the most uh, uh, efficient and as well as effective manner possible uh now when it comes to r and d uh, so like you like you said that uh, the product nature is such that consumer is putting it on their face and hence uh, while trust is a very core part of it but there is also this whole angle of experience and when it comes to makeup the consumers and specifically like i mentioned swiss beauty is a very very strongly retail oriented business uh, till now we are present in online also and growing fast there as well uh, but the 11 year old business which has been built up till now is very very heavy uh, gt retail now what happens at a shop floor is that you go to your that regular retailer to buy makeup products and the consumers are so specific bhaiya wo swiss beauty ki वो वाली लिपस्टिक बारह नंबर वाली चाहिए एंड द शेड हैज टू बी द सेम एंड दैट्स वेयर यू नो द होल आर एंड डी एंड क्वालिटी चेक पीस कम्स इन टू पिक्चर बिकॉज लॉन्चिंग द प्रोडक्ट्स एंड गेटिंग आउट द राइट प्रोडक्ट्स विच आर ग्रेट इन क्वालिटी इज वन थिंग बट मेनटेनिंग दैट कंसिस्टेंसी वेदर इट बी इन टर्म्स ऑफ द स्मूथनेस ऑफ एप्लीकेशन द ट्वेल्व आवर्स डे और यू नो द शेड्स uh uh so there is a separate team which basically looks into each and every batch which comes in and how do we match each and every different shades of the products which are there because that is very very important from a business perspective uh so so uh, uh the r&d goes into not just the formulation but also the quality check of maintaining the hygiene uh then the second part is uh uh the brand ambassador so uh for us for uh, those of you don't know uh, swiss beauty's brand ambassador is tapsi pannu uh yes and uh, she uh, as beautiful as she is uh i think one of the very very important qualities or rather uh, essentials for a brand when they associate with another brand uh in the form of brand ambassador is that there should be certain commonalities uh in terms of the origin story of, or what are at the core of the brand both the brands and i think what works beautifully for swiss beauty as well as tapsi is that both the brands are uh, uh, self made they are independent and they are fiercely expressive uh, and these qualities are common for both the brands whether it be tapsi and swiss beauty uh, again swiss beauty is a bootstrap company which is currently uh, uh uh you know operating in the environment which is very charged with investor money it is uh profitably 
operating on its own since 11 years. So uh, it has been uh, built in a certain manner with strong business principles and with strong consumer orientation that works for us. Yeah, I guess that's what really builds the, you know, what we talk about, you know, the authenticity uh, in the connection that you create with your customers. You know, quite frankly, when I see Shah Rukh Khan using Denver, uh, I, I don't think it really appeals to anyone, for example. Or even when I see Saurabh Ganguly using Denver. I mean, I, I would find a brand like Fog far more authentic because they use no superstars. They just using people like you and I who are talking about things which actually matter to us. Yeah. So, so talking about the authenticity and, and from the authenticity actually comes your reputation. And a very important part of this aspect of trust and relationship building is reputation management. So Sachin, uh, Pesa Bazaar has gone, has gone through certain trying times. Yeah, 2020 you had the mutual fund issue, 2022 you had this thing of, um, you know, when you cut down on your manpower. As a tech brand, you guys are a tech brand, I mean, how do you manage reputation? And how do you use technology to manage reputation? Uh, so, uh, 2020 was a tough year, not only for Pesa Bazaar, but for, uh, you know, uh, the entire industry by and large. Uh, lending almost came to a halt, halt, right? Uh, uh, so, uh, just to give you the perspective, our revenue went down by 95% between March 20 and April 20. So, that is the kind of impact we had. Uh, right. Uh, as far as the mutual fund uh, uh, issue uh, is concerned, it was not a crisis per se. Uh, so basically, we uh, were again the first one in the country to launch direct mutual funds. We were not making any money out of it. And uh, in the larger scheme of things, we, we thought that mutual fund uh, uh, product will help us building better lending models. Right. Uh, and uh, in five, six years, we realized that uh, it is not as efficient as we thought it would be. And there are other players and we were spreading ourselves too thin if we are trying to, so like I said, uh, you know, a brand is a promise, right, which you make. So, and uh, good thing is if you make only one promise, uh, if you make multiple promises to the same consumers, it would confuse him, right? So while we uh, predominantly are a lending company, we say that we will get, try to get you the best loan in the uh, you know uh, uh, in the most efficient manner right at the same time if i say that by the way i am also an investment company it will con confuse our consumers right so that was a call we took and uh, we stopped onboarding new mutual fund consumers it was the same time when all these grow and other uh, players they were uh, you know uh, taking up market now uh, the again the manpower uh, thing uh, it was not a one off thing uh, while we do uh, let go people, uh, basis performance, uh, but uh, see, see, the base of any relationship, whether it is between a brand and a consumer or an employer and an employee, it is uh, the uh, amount of honesty in that relationship, right? Uh, whether it's a promise you're making to a consumer or to an employee, if you're honest and if you are taking certain actions because of the external scenarios, people would understand, right? Uh, so, uh, and that's what happened. We, uh, you know, uh, we came back uh, strongly. Uh, in fact, in 2021-22, our uh, revenue was almost 1.6, 1.7x of pre-COVID numbers at much healthier margins because we got time to, you know, work on our uh, product, work on our processes and uh, uh, we invested that duration when business was tough. We invested that time to strengthen our products and our uh, proposition and our processes and we came back, you know, we, we bounced back very strongly. Thanks, thanks. Uh, you know, uh, another very important um, aspect of, of um, authenticity and trust is transparency. And, and if you come across, I mean, if you made a mistake and if you own up to the mistake in a very transparent manner, which also you talked about, Rajiv, transparency, okay, nothing really holds you back from being a brand. Uh, <clears throat> Nikhil, to you, I'll come to you last, Rajiv. And sorry, we guys will take five minutes more than our scheduled time. I hope you people are enjoying the conversation, by the way. I am. So, so Nikhil, given that you were straddling, you know, B2B, B2C and doing all this, uh, 
do the tech interfaces remain the same for you or do you really uh, compartmentalize them no i think uh, from a access standpoint technology that is being utilized by consumers and uh, businesses uh, becomes a little different for us uh, and the reason for that is that um, people are looking for different things uh, when you're a b2b uh, customer of ours you're looking at sustainability uh, that is not really a buzzword anymore a lot of our uh, customers are now chasing a net zero target uh, by 2040 2050 uh, and as part of their net zero commitment uh, they are trying to cut down on carbon emissions across their entire value chain which includes suppliers they are looking for more sustainable partners more sustainable companies and that's where technology for us plays a very big role in b2b as the most sustainable company uh, we need to ensure that our innovations that we bring to market uh, deliver on that promise where we continue to be more and more sustainable in our offerings for our customers and in turn it helps them achieve their targets in terms of uh, carbon emissions uh, and uh, lighting is something that is an energy consumer right at the end of the day but if you see what we have today we are almost at about 95 96% less energy consumption than pre led days uh, in terms of what solutions are being offered to b2b customers right now uh, but when we look at what tech means for consumers they are actually looking for a solution they are looking for design for them uh for us uh, tech there means access to our products for them now this basically comes in the form of d2c it comes in the form of how you using digital marketing uh technology to ensure that uh, there is discoverability about our solutions that they have uh how do they reach out because if you see consumers today and all of us who are sitting here today uh, the first thing that we do is open google whether it's a question or not even if you're looking for a product if you're looking for a price the first thing that you do is you google it uh you got some links and that's where the uh, journey starts for us in terms of buying decision and it is here that uh, technology plays a very very big role in competitive uh, environment today where each brand is trying to be uh, the first one out there in terms of what the consumer is wanting to look for Uh, and this is where i think uh, a lot of new age technology is going where uh, how do you make the brand more relevant for the consumer Re- not just second guessing but even guessing before the consumer gets to know uh, what is he looking for in the product delivering that message to him even before he decides on it and then he picking up your product i think a lot of technology on the consumer side is going on that side uh and uh, all of us are really uh, trying to one up each other <laughs> in finding that well said uh but rajiv uh given the nature of your business you are all tech right and you always need to stay ahead of the curve right and because you need to build your relationships with your clients uh and your clients obviously are you use- are using your platform to build stickier relationships with their customers so according to you what are the two key tech trends that you see over the next say 12 to 18 months very <coughs> nice uh thanks for asking this question i was waiting uh, for this one to come up so technology first of all for us is not a choice to make it's the reason to exist we are all about technology and innovation our business is built around that uh just to quickly repeat a little we are a platform that gives you access to consumers on emerging formats like what you see as digital out of home large formats connected tv and the works uh so first of all for us we are always on our toes when it comes to what's the new trend what direction are we headed towards what's going to be uh, what what will survive and what will not for example we believe that in at least next 10 years the handset mobile phone that we all see uh, will cease to exist and there are companies uh, moving fast towards them uh, i'm wearing uh, something that is allowing me to listen check get directions everything through audio and through these way so 
that's where life is moving towards. It makes our life difficult because how the hell do we serve ads in such kind of environment? And if we don't serve ads, how do we survive? So those are the kind of challenges that we keep discussing. Uh, with regards to your specific question on what are the key trends, uh, from an advertising stroke marketing stroke brand perspective, one visible thing that we believe or we see is the, uh, there used to be times when there, were, there was a concept called media dark pockets. They used to be in villages and rural areas of Bimaru states. No more. That exists here in this uh, particular place that we all are sitting. We are media dark. We are linear media dark audience. So one trend which we clearly see is people are stepping more and more out of home for many things and people are spending more and more time in home for a lot of things that used to be otherwise out of home. So shopping today or ordering products has very clearly shifted towards an in-home environment but exploring everything else is making sure with better infra, better automobiles, better cars, we see that people are stepping out which is why we are investing heavily towards out of home media, be it anything, you get into retail, to, uh, to billboards, to whatever else. So one clear visible area is for a lot of new experiences, consumers are going to step out of home much more than before because of better infra and better quality of things available. And for various things that we all, the, the, the esteemed panelists that are sitting, that they're willing to sell their products to, it's going to be home consumption, largely speaking. So. That's the key driver trend that we are building our company towards. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, I guess, uh, do we have time for questions? No. Unfortunately, we do not. Unfortunately, we don't. Uh, but uh, all, of, all of them are there. Uh, in your midst, you can keep asking them questions, getting clarifications. Well, all I would say, Vidushi, Sachin, Rajiv, Nikhil, Kush, thank you very much. We've had a wonderful Adda session. Okay, and uh, being a Bengali, all I would say, Shubho Vijaya to all of you, right? Have a wonderful year ahead and uh, hope we destroy as much more of evil as possible. Thank you.